well, I think, hopefully, I think that makes quite a difference. Which is already, as far as I can tell. Right, well, we've made it here. Well, welcome to the Classic Car Channel now. Today we're going to just give the Angler a quick check over because tomorrow is the first of the Classic Car meets for 2022 that we'll be going to. So that's, that's all quite exciting. So if you've been keeping an eye on the channel you'll know I actually had this running just a week or two back. So it shouldn't need too much work. It is actually fairly clean so I rinsed it off after its little journey out. So it should just want the windows cleaning and tidy up a little bit in the back. I've got another old book found this one recently somewhere so I thought that'll look just perfect inside the car on display somewhere I do like to put a few little odds and ends inside the car just to sort of uh, complete the look as you can see a few old bits of memorabilia here and there so we'll squeeze this book in somewhere we'll put it there for now that'll do people have asked would I consider putting an alternator rather than the dynamo for charging the battery and also converting from the original 6 volt to 12 volt but the way I look at it is these cars work perfectly well back in the day on 6 volt as long as everything kind of works correctly the 6 volt should do the job just perfectly the dynamo works it charges the battery up okay if you're running headlights all the time then you may have a problem but it worked back in the day it worked from the 1930s with this engine all the way up to the 1950s so uh, I don't really see any point in upgrading it just for the sake of it and if you get really stuck you can always start it on the starting handle uh, if you've not seen it there is a video all about the starting handle and its many many uses I uploaded that last year sometimes so that was quite good fun but today we're just going to check it over fire it up tidy up the inside and just make sure that it's ready to take out to this little show that's taking place tomorrow over in Crewe the venue is the Heritage Centre, where they keep lots of old railway related items right alongside the main uh, railway line and station at Crewe itself. Um, they have a fairly regular classic car meeting there and that seems to be growing quite nicely. I did a video there uh, at some point last year I think, and, uh, but we didn't take this, we just turned up in a modern car. But I thought well, we should really turn up in something old and proper and as this is the only one that I can actually get out because the Dodge is stuck behind the prefect at the moment down there um, then we'll take this one and it should be quite a nice little run out for us no heater of course so we're going to be very heroic tomorrow and just get dressed up with many many layers and scarves and woolly hats and so on because we'll go fairly early about eight nine o'clock and it's probably still a little bit chilly at that point but uh, we're made of stern stuff so uh, it shouldn't be too much of a too much of an issue now what you may have noticed is i'm not actually a big fan of polishing cars um, as you can see but what I'm going to do today uh, I've cleaned all the windows already I mean the big difference between this era of Anglia and the uh, Pop 103 that came afterwards certainly from the drivers and passenger viewpoint is the dashboard this is Bakelite very similar to that that's in the Prefect the later Pop just had a tin dashboard a very simple speedo in there and a fuel gauge and an ammeter but the interior in these is just that little bit more interesting now what I'm going to do is just see if I can bring up the Bakelite a bit it's gone quite dull. I don't know if it's ever been cleaned in recent years or not. But it's a little bit dull and flat and lifeless. And I tried a little bit here and it really made a difference. I'm not sure if you can see that. But I just did this lower section here. And what I used is some Carnuba wax. I bought a big tin of it years ago. And I just decant a little bit into a pot as and when I need some. So I tried that bit there. And it just gave it a bit more body, a bit more life to it. So the plan now is to do the rest of the dash and see if this will come up as well as this is done. I don't want it super shiny, but I just want it looking nice. And I think comparing that to that, I think it'll be worth the effort. So I'll report back in a few minutes time when I've done the rest of it. It's going to be a bit fiddly around here and they don't want to leave little white bits anywhere. That looks just terrible with polish of any sort. So I'll have to be a little bit careful around here and not splodge too much on. But yeah, I'll be back as soon as I've done the rest of the dash and we'll just see how well this very dull finish comes up. Well, 
Well, hopefully the camera picks that up. I've done it up to there. And I think, hopefully, I think that makes quite a difference. So uh, let's crack on with the rest. I'm not sure if we can see the difference on the top there. Left, I haven't done it. Right, I have done it. So that gives you an idea of how it can come up. I don't know how long the finish remains like that before it sort of fades off again. I'm not quite sure, but it'll be interesting to see. Well, hopefully there's sufficient light there to see what a transformation I managed to achieve with the dashboard. This was all quite flat before, but now it's got a nice sort of glowing sheen to it. It's not shiny, but it's just got a great sheen to it, which is just perfect. It's like a wood effect. Obviously trying to look a little bit more expensive than it was, but that has really set off the dashboard a treat, I think. I guess the tricky bit now will be keeping it looking that nice. The window surrounds are also Bakelite, but they, I think, have probably already been done, so I'm not going to bother with those. You can't really see that one. But they are fairly shiny, so I think we'll leave those well alone. Now, the one glaring, awful point about the dashboard is this peg for the choke so i think we'll have to stain that down at some point so uh, i'm not going to do that now because it's not exactly a priority but um at some point i think we'll just dull that down just to make it fit in a little bit more with the overall ambience of the 1952 ford anglia but for now we'll pop it back on there that can stay there for its next run hopefully tomorrow now one of the items of memorabilia that i keep in the anglia is this rac club Royal Automobile Club Guide and Handbook for 1953. The car is a late 1952 registration, I think. So this would have been the first edition of the RAC Handbook to ever appear in this particular car, if it ever had one, of course. And I thought I'd just have a quick look, because the first few pages of this particular handbook, apologies for the wind noise, it's really windy today, and the first few pages, once you get past the index, are some fantastic old adverts. So I just thought I'd have a quick look at those. I'm sorry the door is a... Uh, banging a little bit in the wind but we'll endeavour to do our best so we've got a national benzol mi mixture there and Mr Benzol there or Mr Mercury wasn't it that's right Lockheed hydraulic brakes use Enerjol motor oil BP lubrication on your mind hmm here we go then no need to blind you with science sir nearly every car maker recommends Enerjol I'm sure they do well, they certainly did let's see what else we have no tech add a wider margin of safety to your car they produced a range of fog lamps back in the day the bray electric car engine heater so this was like a preheater that you could install on your engine and then because so they say the majority of the wear on an engine is when you first start it up and when it's running cold until the oil and the coolant get up to temperature so this preheater would sort of bypass that particular time when your engine was experiencing the most wear so that was probably a very good idea over the page get going and get a young battery rac repairs self-drive blah 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 the singer sm1500 this was the replacement for the very similar singer hunter or was it the other way around? Someone will tell me. Not an entirely popular little saloon car, quite dumpy looking. Singer Motors continue their policy of refining the comfort, performance and finish of two highly developed models. The SM1500 Saloon and the SM Roadster. Both now available with twin car rotor engine as an optional extra. The SM1500 Saloon, like I say, wasn't a great success. But the SM Roadster, um, they did sell in quite reasonable numbers. And the, there was a number of variations. The, the grill varied throughout the years and the very other, various other spec changes as production continued. Got a few other things here. Put pep in your plugs with the super sparkers. That boosted the spark by making it jump across a little gap somewhere within the plug lead. The theory was that when the plug, uh, the spark jumps across the gap, it strengthens the spark and makes it more efficient. To Calumet service. Henleys, distributors for Jaguar and Rover. Dominion Royal tyres. So these were all the kinds of products that this car may well have been fitted with back in the day. CG Normal & Co. in Westminster, Car High, Austin & Citroen Service, Aldridge's, 
blah blah blah, printing company, don't need that, and Norfolk Broads, holiday afloat this year, what's that, that's for headaches and rheumatic pain, comfort for you and your engine, the KL monitor with ventilator, fresh air duct, gives you fresh cool air in summer, and fresh warm air in winter, that'll be music to the ears of anyone with a Ford Anglia, a Prefect or a Ford Pop back in the day, which uh, of course they didn't come with a heater as standard, we've got a radiator roller blind there as well, That'd be quite a handy thing just to bring the engine up to temperature that much quicker when the weather is really cold. Reselect the gearbox specialists here, Arcot Engineering. Just a few more adverts to go. Mintex, which sort of the famous brake linings, of course. Bit of car insurance. And that, there's a picture of the Royal Automobile Club itself. And this rather wonderful bookmark India, the finest tyres made. And not only is that a bookmark, it's also got a ruler on the back. And this allows you to measure out the distances of the maps in here. Along the edges of this bookmark is a scale giving 16 miles to an inch with subdivisions. This may be found useful in connection with the road maps in this guide, which are of the same scale. We've got various conversions there, metric into imperial. I'm not sure what metric is. Newfangled things. Same again there. And your tyres. And yeah, and this allows you to measure the distances of maps that will appear somewhere in here. That's a nice advert. Service on the roads of Britain. Fantastic. Motorcycle and sidecar combination there. Directory, road signs and so on. So anyway, I just thought I'd have a quick look at this nice old copy of the RAC handbook from 1953. Oh, here we go. Here's some maps. So this scale on the side of the bookmark would allow you to measure the distances on the map. Of course, there was no motorways back in 1953. So that's quite a, quite a bonny little thing. I do like that. Anyway, I think the Anglia is pretty much ready for its run out tomorrow. I've checked the oil, checked the coolant, given it a quick clean. I just need to take that case off the back seat there. So I think we're pretty much good to go. I'll clean the windows as well. Obviously, the dashboard is looking nice and shiny in there, so it'll look all very resplendent tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see if there's any other little side valve Fords turn up. There may be a 100E or a, I think there was a hot rodded pop or Anglia there once. So it'll be interesting to see if that turns up. Well, I think she's all ready for tomorrow now, so I think we'll head back inside and have a cup of tea, warm up a little bit, and then hopefully we'll be able to set off fairly early over to Crewe to the Heritage Centre and see what other old cars, vintage cars, etc. turn up for this particular meeting. It's still January, so it'll be interesting to see who still has their cars taxed at this time of year, and because quite a few people laid their cars up for the winter and only put them on the road when the spring comes along. So what the turnout will be like, I don't quite know, but hopefully there'll be a good turnout there tomorrow. You didn't think I was going to leave that uh, clothes peg looking like that, do you? I've just stained it up, so hopefully it'll be dry by tomorrow. Well, it's the following morning and the uh, Anglia's out and ready to go. Just got a nice sunrise in the distance there. I thought it seemed appropriate to put this little booklet in the car. Take the family for a run. One shilling. And it, okay. It is a pop rather than Anglia, but from a distance, you'd never know the difference. I think they'll put that in the car. Yep, she's all ready, as far as I can tell. If you want to keep an eye on this particular meeting for yourself to find out when future dates are, check out the Off The Rails Facebook page, because that's where the details of future meetings are usually posted. All right, we're all ready to go. Note the uh, stained down clothes peg there. Looks a bit more in keeping. My accomplice for the day. Great morning for it. Right, well, we've made it here. There's a few cars here already, which is good to see. I think our Anglia is probably the least polished car here, to be honest. I think there's been a couple of new arrivals recently. I do like this Husky. Though. 
Well, we're a couple of hours in, and this meat is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I was going to do one video about the angler and the meat combined, but I think it's just going to be too big. So uh, the rest of the vehicles that are at this show, I will put into a separate video after this one. And, uh, yeah, because it's just going to be too big otherwise. Another mini. But, yeah, it's just going to be too big a video if I try and combine... Anglia, getting the Anglia ready and also everything else that's turned up so uh, it makes sense to split it because I, I don't want to send anyone off to sleep is this fantastic Volvo P1800 ES I've got a feeling this one appeared at the Cape Stone Hall classic car show last year there was a pair of them at one of the meetings there let's have a quick look so it's a fuel injected engine That's a Bosch system, very similar to that that I had on the, the Volvo 164. So, uh, two litre fuel injection, four speed and overdrive. First registered 4th of April 1973, 86,500 miles. So we're going to Chevrolet, we've got a C10 here, G Reg C10 pickup. Really original, looks like it's been oily ragged as opposed to fully restored. That's really smart. I'm not, so what would that be? G Reg, so about 1968 or thereabouts. Some of the original plates. I'm assuming they're the original plates. We've got a Michigan plate there. Yeah, that's in 1969. We've got a recreated plate here in American style of plates, but with the UK English registration on there. That's a really cool. Alongside this mighty C10 with this huge load bay, it's a long wheelbase. Is that the fleet side they call these? And by comparison, here we've got a step side. This is an earlier Chevrolet. Do we have here Cadillac? Wow! Well. <laughs> this is basically a reskin of the TR5. When did this Farina come in? I didn't see this pull in. Old Princess, the VDP. Let's have a look at the back. So it's a three-litre. The Van der Plas four-litre R had a slightly different roof line. Horizontal rear lights. This is a three-liter princess, and there's the badge just to prove it. But yeah, it's a beautiful car that is. I didn't see this coming in. I did upload a video all about the big Farinas and the Oxfords and the Cambridges the other day. So if you've not seen that particular photo collection video, check it out if that kind of car is your thing. Four-door cars with a prefect. If it's a two-door, it would be an Anglia or a popular, the 100E range, but the four doors were always prefects. <coughs> the TVR just pulling in behind me. When there were two versions of the prefect in this shape of body shell, you've got the 100E side valve power car, the 1172, which is what this is. And there was also the 107E, and that had the overhead valve engine from the 105E Anglia in it. Mini light wheels, old case on the back. I don't see too many good ones of those around anymore. Well, we had a really great day out today. Uh, like I say, the contents of the main show itself will be in a separate video, but the angle is safely tucked away. The only casualty of the entire trip was the fan belt. It started making a pretty bad noise on the way there. 
as you can see hopefully it's looking fairly second hand now so when I got back I had a route through a box and found another one just let me just see if I can find where's that little light I must have find a proper old stock fan belt in the box of belts that's a proper wide belt not one of these modern narrow ones there you go So that's all back on and adjusted so I've given it a quick run up and it seems to be it seems to be okay so I didn't want it too tight because I don't want to stress the bearings in the dynamo at all so I'll just keep an eye on that give it a couple of runs and see how we go with that but yeah overall it was a really successful day this is a fairly regular meet so uh, if you're ever in the area and I think it's the last Sunday I think they're aiming to hold this particular show on so check out the off the rails Facebook group for notifications of future gatherings and we'll try and get along to as many of them as we can. Uh, obviously there'll be other shows coming up later in the year, so we won't be able to get to all of them, but hopefully we'll get to as many as we can. Really great little show, thanks to everyone who puts it together. And uh, anyway, I think we'll probably sign out with this particular video and keep an eye on the channel for the main video, showing all the other many, many classic cars that were at this particular meet. Thanks very much for watching, and bye for now.